You are listening to the 90 Days Later podcast with Anna Charles, episode 150. Welcome to the 90 Days Later podcast, where I show you how life with less alcohol is more fun than you think. I work with high achievers who struggle to drink a glass of wine without it turning into two bottles. I'm the one they call when they want to take it or leave it. So if you want to change your relationship with alcohol that doesn't involve counting days sober, you're in the right place. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. Something really exciting has just happened for me. Yes, I have just booked a ticket and the singular is appropriate to go and see Adam Ant in concert. Yes, my husband doesn't want to join me. I was a fan of Adam Ant back in the 80s, showing my age here, and never got around to seeing him, probably because his career then was fairly short-lived. Anyway, I'm going to see him in concert on Saturday. And why am I telling you this? Because it doesn't matter what time you start doing something, it is the right time, right? So it doesn't matter, in my mind, that I'm seeing him. Obviously, he's probably well past his prime, it is an opportunity that has come up and I'm grabbing it and I'm doing it. And I wanted to talk. I thought that was an interesting thing that just happened because it just happened to me like a couple of hours ago, less than actually. And I had wanted to talk today about just reframing Sober October. Now, this podcast episode is going out on Tuesday, the 15th of October. We are midway through the month. So for those of you who started Sober October on the 1st and you're still going, great. I have another episode actually from last year that talks about the how we do the Sober October, I think is more important than even the result. But know, you might want to listen to that. But if you're one of those people and you didn't start or you started and you've given up already or you're hating it and you're counting the days until the end of the month, then this is for you. Because I really want to reframe Sober October from it's not about starting on October the 1st and sort of doing a perfect streak of 31 days. Instead, I want to reframe it as an it's just an opportunity to use this month to take action regardless of the date and regardless actually of how big that action is. Today the 15th, or whenever you are listening to this, is there just as powerful a time to start taking action on changing a relationship with alcohol as it would have been on the 1st of October. And I say this to you, especially if you know that perfectionism is something that tends to hold you back. The way I like to look at perfectionism is like the notebook. I talk about it as for myself as being notebooks. I love notebooks. I love stationery moleskin give me a moleskin notebook with a red cover oh I'm in heaven but then I'll get a notebook and it will be okay what is this notebook going to be for and I always have these thoughts that I want to write right perfectly in it I don't want any crossings out I'm going to use a ruler for underlining yes I mean I have all these thoughts about it even at this stage of my life and that can stop me using it I mean I can walk around with a beautiful in the past before I found coaching I'd walk around with a beautiful book and I wouldn't be using it and it's like, this is ridiculous. You know, there's the pleasure in having the thing, but there's more in using it. So now I just allow those feelings and I go for it. And that's what we're talking about today. We're allowing the feelings, any feelings you might be having that you should have started before, that it's not going to be right. You don't know what you're doing. Nee, 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 nee. And we're just going to start, right? We're going to start taking action today. Because when you're waiting for the quote unquote perfect moment, that is a form of procrastination and it is often rooted in fear right? Fear of perfectionist thinking. So I'm going to talk about five elements today and actually that I've already moved into my first. That is do not wait for an official start date. Just start, right? Whenever you listen to this, I'm anointing that for you today as your start. And this is powerful because so often we do start, we do wait for, again, something like October the 1st or maybe a Monday or New Year's Day or the first day back to school for the children, or whatever it is. But these official start dates are arbitrary because when you're waiting for the perfect time, you are often putting off taking action, any kind of action, any kind of action. And why is that? Well, it's usually rooted in a desire to avoid discomfort or uncertainty. Maybe 
when it comes to sober October, you've tried many times before. Maybe you've done dry January and I forget what the one was for July that people were talking about. There seems to be some, we put some word before the month, but really it's just a kind of a way to say, you know, I'm going to go for it. When you're waiting for the perfect time, you're often putting off taking action. And often that, I would say it's rooted in this desire to avoid being discomfort or to avoid uncertainty. I see this with many, many high achievers, especially because we are used to achieving goals. We're used to setting goals and achieving them. We have very high standards for ourselves. And yet when it comes to drinking, we know this is kind of like, oh, this is a bit like that area where we're always going to trip up. And so we just not only do we make it mean something about ourselves that we can't change, but we don't like that feeling of failure that we don't tend to not have right in the rest of our lives. So then we start to think, well, there must be a perfect moment. There must be perfect circumstances, you know, or else it doesn't count. Right. This is simply not true. Life rarely is going to give us perfect conditions and waiting for them is just another way to delay the inevitable discomfort that will come with change. When you're waiting for your husband to say he's going to not drink so much too, you know, you're putting your fate in his hands. You're waiting for a perfect time that may or may not come. So instead, I want you to ask. So on this episode, I'm going to ask you some, going to set up a scenario and then I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to really think about this. So if this is you, if you have been sitting there waiting for the perfect time, whatever that means, ask, why are you waiting for a particular date to start? What are the magical properties of that particular date? Be honest with yourself. You do not have to own up or open up to anyone else. But if it's fear or hesitation, I want you to acknowledge those feelings. Do not let them paralyze you. Think about this, taking action today, no matter how small, even if it's a decision that just because you missed the boat on the 1st of October, you're going to start on the 15th, right? Even if it's that little decision, that is far more impactful than waiting for the ideal moment that, let's face it, may no never come, right? Because you can always adjust, you can always improve, you can always modify as you go. But once you have some momentum built up, it's easier to keep going. The key is to get started. And think about this as well. If you're thinking, but really, Anna, I get that. But eh, the rest of these two weeks of October really don't count. I should have started before. Consider it a bit like preheating an oven when you're cooking. I mean, have you seen this? You know, you get the instructions, you're cooking, cooking a roast chicken or whatever, preheat the oven. And when I was younger, I used to think that was ridiculous. Why would you bother with that? Why do you just bung the thing in, right? Bung it in the oven straight away. Well, there is some science behind it and it helps it to cook evenly and all those things and so you could view you could view these two weeks that are left in October as preheating right we're doing the work now we're getting started gently now we're changing our relationship now with alcohol we're starting that work because this isn't just a you know a a one month thing you want to take those learnings into November you want to keep modifying and change it because when we change our relationship that means we're changing our identity around it it's it's a long longer more permanent thing so any work you do now in october it's just really making um it much more likely that when you comes to november you'll be really rocking and rolling i mean you can think of it in those terms too second way i want you to think about getting started with sober october midway through the month is we are by doing this we're addressing the fear of failure Right. One of the main reasons people hesitate to take action is this fear of failure. I've spoken about failure many times on the podcast, but it is a very real and visceral feeling. And it's often how we are brought up that failure is bad. Now, you might think if I don't try, I can't fail. I mean, that might be the, the, the thought that's running under you. And I want to offer this mindset creates a false sense of safety and security. But actually, it's keeping you stuck. It's not helping you feel safe and secure at all, because the more you think that, the more you think, oh, well, I'm not going to be taking action. And the more you don't take action, the more you see that you are effectively failing ahead of time and not getting what you want. Right? We often fear failure because we equate it with being not good enough. And I think for people I work with, for high achievers, for highly, highly, highly functioning people with huge jobs sometimes, and certainly you know, a, a great sense of you know who you are, that fear of failure can be even stronger. We say things like, I know I need to fail. I know failure isn't failure, Anna. I mean, people tell me that, but right, dot, 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 I still can't bring myself to do it. So we often have 
when you're in this mode, you're in perfectionism, you have an all or nothing mindset, right? This is back to you've got to start on the 1st of October or it doesn't count or it's not good enough. So I better not do it at all, right? I just won't bother. I'll delay it till November. Actually, November isn't a thing. Now. And then December's a holiday. So actually, we'll do. I'm going to delay this to dry January. And can you see what you're doing there? You are moving, just sort of pushing this rock uphill, this 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 issue in your life that you want to solve and you're saying I'm going to now live for the next three months or two and a half months with something that I don't want and who knows on the 1st of January if you miss that date right are you going to then be oh missed that so I need to wait again I mean it just carries on and on and on this fear of failure leads to inaction because it's easier to avoid trying now right than to risk the discomfort of failing but failure isn't the enemy it really is how we grow think about how we teach children we expect their writing when they first start to be not very good. And we don't yell at them, you're never going to be good enough. We just encourage them to keep going, to make little, little, little changes. If you're one of those people who says, I know failure isn't a bad thing, but I want this to be your time when you're going to reframe it. Let's just reframe it as a necessary part of the process. Not even if it comes along, that's OK, but it's necessary Without failure, I'm not going to succeed. Because when you're hesitant to take action, I want you to ask yourself what you are really afraid of. I mean, truly, often it's actually not the failure itself, but it's the fear of what you think that means about you. Like, oh, I've been trying this for so long, I just can't bear to think if I give it another go, it really means I must be someone who's just never going to figure this out. When you can recognize that failure it really is just feedback, it's not a final judgment. That's going to free you. It's going to free you to try and learn and improve and be playful about this, right? View this from a child's mind because once you conquer this fear, then you're going to start taking action. And now is better than waiting for that perfect moment when success you think would be guaranteed. Because let's face it, as we said just now, that moment never comes. Third point I want to make here and another reason why you might not want us get started on the 15th of the month is that actually we fear success yeah this is a humdinger right because when we consider cutting back or quitting alcohol quitting drinking altogether maybe we imagine and i did this i, I remember this so clearly a dreary dull life i might be successful what if i'm successful at this that means i'm just going to live with no shabby ever so oh right on the on the surface level yeah i want to have less alcohol but really is that is you know is that a gateway to the life that i want we think about our social life it's going to be ruined or we'll be bored or life in general is just going to lose its sparkle i mean no champagne on new year's eve right our brain goes to all these what we're going to be losing out on this kind of negative projection can make the idea of of not drinking or drinking less feel really unappealing and frankly depressing. And what we're doing here is we're then saying we're taking that mindset and then sort of overlaying that as a blanket on the rest of our life. If we believe our life is going to be bleak or empty, I mean, think about it. You're not going to even try. You're not going to want to try because who wants that? We're going to cling to what's familiar, even if it's unhealthy, even if it's something that we don't want, because the change, the other scenario feels very threatening. It's easier to stay in the comfort zone of drinking than face that kind of unknown future. So I want you to recognize this, that our brain goes to worst case scenario. If you're successful here, it means you're going to be out in this bleak gray existence and flip the script. What if the future without alcohol is better than I imagined? I mean, really go there. Just try it. We don't do this. Right, what if I do have more energy? What if I think more clearly? What if I do have deeper relationships? What if I would have more confidence? Maybe those are all the things I'm going to get from my life. The truth is that when we're drinking in moderation or even giving up entirely, that's going to open doors to possibilities you may not have considered yet. Because we're sitting there thinking, well, if I'm successful at this, it just means this other thing. It's one plus one equals 52. That's what we're doing. I want you to challenge those negative assumptions you're making about life without alcohol or less alcohol. And just instead, try it on. Play with this. Envision what you stand to gain. Whether that's more time, more presence, more health, more sleep. Right? The future doesn't have to be bleak. It actually could be brighter than ever. Fourth point here. 
And this is one I get a lot of pushback on <laughs> with my wonderful, lovely clients. This is embracing the power of small wins. That's kind of like coach speak. But this is really just celebrating when you when things go right, even little things. Right? This isn't about oh, you know, because we tend to, if something goes right, we tend to think oh well, you know, of course I should have been able to do that before. We downplay things. We talk about it being, you know, kind of like the medal for participation. We just don't own successes. So I want you to own successes. Every tiny, weeny, weeny little success. Because we tend to focus on big goals and dramatic results. I remember once talking to a friend and I was just at the stage of wanting to start running. This is back about five years ago. I hadn't run, hadn't done fitness for years. And I said, oh, you're interested. I said, yeah, you know, my goal is to run a half marathon and it's like oh there you go there's high achiever mindset right I haven't stepped one step out and yet your goal is already this when truth be told I couldn't run at that point really easily for a minute or two so we have these big lofty dramatic goals and if it's not big dramatic or lofty that we tend to think it doesn't count right if I can't do the whole of October then it doesn't count I mean 15 days 16 days pff, doesn't count but when we do this, we tend to overlook the power of small incremental wins and small incremental wins are going to get us to the big lofty goals. When you're trying to cut down on drinking or quitting altogether, it really is the small victories that build momentum and confidence. Simple things like skipping a drink at a social event, delaying your first drink, choosing a non-alcoholic option as your first drink, declining a top up when a server's going around the table. Right? even uh, maybe a, a weekend alcohol free, whatever it is, celebrate these small things. Because when we're thinking, if it's not a huge change, it doesn't count, it doesn't matter, it's not going to help, that is going to sabotage your progress. Many people discount the significance of these small wins, right? Because they do not seem big enough. This can lead to frustration and the feeling that we're not making progress even when we are. When I wrote my first book, well, I think looking back, when I wrote my novel, one of the things that caught me back so often was I just didn't think it was good enough. I wasn't making enough progress. When if I did, if I wrote a paragraph, it's like, well, why didn't you read a chap write a chapter? If you can't write a chapter, you're not it's not good enough. So I wouldn't start. Right? Small wins are powerful because they do build consistency, they build habit, they reinforce the idea that change is happening. You might not be able to see it, but it's happening. Each time you choose to forego a drink or make a conscious decision about alcohol, or even see how you're thinking or feeling, you are reinforcing new habits. You are interrupting the old one. These seemingly small decisions, they really add up over time and can have a cumulative effect on your long term success. So this is your permission, if you so need it, to celebrate every victory, no matter how small, because it moves you closer to your bigger goal will help to keep you motivated so one thing you could do is you could write a list at the end of each day of all the things that you did that you think might be moving your relationship out your relationship with alcohol closer to where you want it to be finally this is related to the topic on failure but i want to be even more specific i want you to reframe every setback as a learning opportunity and i don't want you just to nod along and say oh yeah 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 makes sense i want you to do this <laughs> do it setbacks are inevitable in any journey but how you respond makes all the difference and what you mean about you if you are going out on a journey and you have your gps there maybe you have it all lined up in front of you you'll give you google maps and it says turn right and you miss the turning right you don't sit and go oh so, well maybe you do <laughs> oh, i'm so stupid no the system is going to just reroute you even if it doesn't reroute you you know you've made a mistake and you can just turn around you don't sit there and say, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm a useless driver. I'm a useless navigator. I don't know why I bother. I'm just going to stop. And yet that's what we do. So we don't want to do that. We want to just reframe these. Because for many, when we slip up, even once, it can feel like total failure. The fact that you haven't started in sober October until the 15th might be, well, look at me. I'm obviously not that serious about this, right? This kind of all or nothing and how we talk to ourselves can, can make us think, well, I might as well give up already messed up might as well give up so reframe that please don't make this mean that you're not capable of change don't make it mean that one misstep means you fail completely and you're never going to figure this out right and that, that then leads you back to this perfectious well i better wait till the you know whatever the next 
quote unquote official start date is. This is one of the biggest barriers to long term success this all or nothing. So instead of seeing it as a failure, view it as feedback. Ask yourself what caused it and answer the questions. Right? Was it stress? Was it social pressure? Was it some emotional trigger? Use that to learn about yourself and your habits. This is what I do when I coach people. We go through in detail what is happening in their lives, what's happening at the various different moments so that we can understand it. And when we have that knowledge and understanding, we can give it another go and there's, it, it gets better and better and better. The information you gain here is going to be valuable because it helps you prepare for future challenges. And most importantly, it's going to help you practice self-compassion because being hard on yourself is not going to help. It's going to keep you stuck. Real growth comes from understanding that setbacks are a natural part of the process and they do not define your overall success. You get back up, you adjust and you keep moving forward. And it can be even more special, I think, if you say, right, I'm just going to start now. It's going to, whenever it is, 15th, 16th of October. Doesn't feel perfect to me, but you know what? I'm starting. So as I wrap up this episode, I want you to remember that Sober October is not about starting perfectly on October the 1st, which, by the way, is why I specifically chose to not have the Sober October um, item episode uh, in, at the end of September. And it's not about maintaining an unbroken streak of perfect days. It is about taking action whenever you're ready, even if it's mid-month, mid-week, right? Whether you're cutting down on alcohol, aiming to drink rarely or stop completely, your journey starts the moment you decide to take that first step. So decide on that now. So today we've covered five key insights. Don't wait for an official start date. Overcome the fear of failure. Challenge the possible bleak future that without alcohol if you're successful embrace small wins and reframe setbacks as learning opportunities because each of these five steps are critical components of lasting change they all work together to break the cycle of perfectionism allowing you to take action learn and grow as you go and remember that progress is better than perfection and starting imperfectly is better than not starting at all So no matter where you are in your journey or what the date is in the calendar, please take that first step now. And if you want help with that, if you think, yeah, I'm going to do it and you want someone to be there by your side so that you're not lonely, so you know what what to do, what to expect and you want step by step support all along the way, I'm your girl. You can go to 90dayslater.co and click on book a call. And we will talk about the exact way to get you to your goals so that you will be doing this without uncertainty and we'll be celebrating together all the small wins and you'll be taking action and you'll be getting what you want, which is that permanent change to your relationship with alcohol. So go do it. Go have fun for the rest of October and decide that whenever you start your sober October, that time is now. If you like what you're learning in the podcast and you want to take the work further and achieve total freedom around alcohol, let's talk. I help my clients stop reaching for that first glass of wine the moment 6pm rolls around and they don't miss out on life. Email me for more information on anna at 90dayslater.co And if you did enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate if you'd leave a rating and review to help others find the 90 Days Later podcast.